Gabby Batita was a 22-year-old girl trying to find her place in the world as a social media influencer. She was your typical all-American girl, pretty, blonde, and bubbly. The Long Island native first made waves as a social influencer when she made a gun violence awareness video in 2013 with her stepbrothers. Gabby would go on to meet Brian Laundrie while attending Bayport Blue Point High School in Long Island. She was a sophomore and he was a junior. Some might call them typical high school sweethearts. Friends of the couple described their relationship as on again, off again, and that it was hard to know whether they were still dating or not at times. One minute they'd be all over each other, the next minute he'd be like, we're fighting, Laundry's friend Ben Matula told People Magazine. They always had some drama. There was always something below the surface where things weren't 100% wonderful, he added. Brian and Gabby broke up after Laundry graduated in 2016, but they eventually patched things up and got back together when Gabby finished high school the following year. After Gabby's graduation, the couple ultimately decided to move in with Brian's parents in Bayport, Florida, instead of potentially pursuing higher education. Gabby landed two jobs, one as a pharmacy technician and another as a waitress, while Brian sold his watercolor paintings and digital artwork. The two got engaged in July of 2020, according to one of Gabby's Instagram posts. She wrote, Brian asked me to marry him, and I said yes. She also added, you make life feel unreal, and every day is such a dream with you. The high school sweethearts decided to put their engagement on hold because they couldn't have the wedding they did after the COVID-19 pandemic hit the United States shores in March of 2020. So instead, the couple decided to raise enough money together to buy and remodel a Ford Transit van and use it on a cross-country road trip across the nation's national national parks. Brian even went as far as to create a YouTube channel to document the couple's van life journey. The channel, Nomadic Static, posted one video with scenes of the couples, of the couple visiting various places in the American West. Coming in on me, the wind is so bad. (laughs) I've just been sitting here like this for a while. (laughs) So, me and Brian just got up and got ready, made the bed in the tent set up. Gabby and Brian were continually posting photos to their Instagram pages. The novice eye would have thought nothing more than the two being head over heels in love. But behind the smiling pigs and seemingly happy post, trouble was brewing. Some say Instagram is harmful to young girls. It creates a need to portray a certain lifestyle, create a certain look, with aspirations of popularity. Perhaps the same could be said for all of social media. The couple took off in June 2021. They planned to take Petito's Ford van to the West Coast and visit state and national parks across the western United States. The van was retrofitted into a tiny house on wheels of sort. She had been excited to share her journey with her family and others on social media. In fact, Gabby maintained regular contact with her family members during her travels. However, that communication abruptly stopped around the end of August. Social media influencers love to tell their story, but often it is only the story they want you to hear or to see. Gabby and Brian were no exception. Moab, Utah police have an encounter with the couple on August the 12th. At this time, officers described them as having engaged in some sort of altercation. And although the two are described as getting into a physical fight following an argument, both the male and female reported that they are in love and engaged to be married and desperately didn't wish to see anyone charged with a crime. 
This was according to a report from Officer Eric Pratt. After evaluating the totality of the circumstances, I do not believe the situation escalated to the level of a domestic assault as much as that of a mental health crisis, Officer Daniel Robbins writes in the report. No charges were filed that day. The couple had their own cell phones in case of an emergency, the report adds. But in a 911 audio recording from that day provided by the Grand County Sheriff's Office, a caller tells dispatch that he wanted to report a domestic dispute and described a white van with a Florida license plate. Let's listen to that 911 call. Grand County Sheriff's Office. Were you able to get a description of the intoxication? Hi, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower, and we're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute in Florida with a white van, Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about five, six beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. They made a, uh, a right onto Main Street from Moonflower. Or what were they doing? Cooperative, but um, what do you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. Okay, you said um, it's a white van? White van. I give you the, I give you the license plate if you give me one sec. I took okay. a picture of it. What kind of white van? Like a big one? Um, it, it was a smaller van with the license plate of, it was white, Florida license plate, QFT G03. It was, the make was a Ford, model was transit, black ladder on the passenger side. Black ladder, uh, passenger uh, side. White Ford Transit. White Ford Transit. Okay, what's your name? And where did they, so they turned, they headed south on Main Street from Moonflower Market? Correct. They made the right turn. Oh, so they went north. North. Yeah, sorry, I'm not from around here. Okay, are you, so you're right there by the post office? Right across the street, yep. Okay, and, and when they turned on to Main Street, they went right or left? Right. Right, so they went north. North on Main. All right, I will let somebody know. Thank you. As you heard, the caller said as they were driving by, the gentleman was slapping the girl. He said, we then stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. I think that considering all that was said and done, and the fact that the officers had not witnessed the crime uh, with their own eyes, and based off what both Brian and Gabby had uh, told the officers during the course of their investigation, they acted appropriately. Many on social media across the nation have berated the officers for not doing more. But there's a thin line between justice and breach of authority. If officers had the authority just to arrest people based on hearsay, our jails would be even more crowded than what they are. Nonetheless, the report was taken. And as sad as it may be that even though Brian Laundry has not been charged with any crime thus far, that it could have potentially stopped any harm to Gabby Petito. But that is in the past, and that is something that we can only discuss now. But unfortunately, we can't answer all of the what-ifs or whys. What we do know is that five days later, on August 17th, Brian flew to Tampa, Florida from Salt Lake City. This was according to the Laundry family attorney, Stephen Bertolini, Bert Tolino, excuse me, Stephen Bertolino. Allegedly, Laundry flew home to obtain some items and empty 
and closed the storage unit that he and Gabby had to save money as they had contemplated extending the road trip. On August 23rd, Laundrie would return to Salt Lake City and rejoin Petito, according to the attorney. To my knowledge, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights as they were sharing expenses. All the while, Petito continued to post photos on Instagram. On August 24th, Petito FaceTimes with her mother and tells her she is leaving Utah and heading to the Teton Range in Wyoming. The next day on August 25th, there are multiple texts between Gabby and her mother. The young woman's family believes that she's in the Tetons on this date. Sadly, her last post would be August 25th. Smiling from ear to ear, holding a crocheted pumpkin, her caption read, Happy Halloween. Haunting and chilling as this would be the last time her Instagram followers would hear from her. Just two days later, on August 27th, a Louisiana couple vacationing in Jackson, Wyoming, said that they saw Petito and Laundry involved in a commotion as they were leaving the Mary Piglet's Tex-Mex restaurant. Nina Angelo, who was at the restaurant with her boyfriend, said Petito was in tears and Laundry was visibly angry, going in and out of the restaurant several times and showing anger towards the staff around the hostess stand. Yeah, it was um, our first full day of um, vacation in Jackson Hole. We were at Mary um, Piglet's, which is a Mexican restaurant in Jackson Hole, and it was Friday, August 27th. We got to the restaurant around 1 o'clock, and it was within... The altercation took place within the first hour of us being there, so um, it had to have been before 2 o'clock. And in as much detail as you feel comfortable sharing, what did you notice about their interaction with each other? It wasn't so much um, their interaction with each other. Um, I didn't really take notice to them at all until they um, got up from their table and they were, like I mentioned in my video, abruptly leaving the restaurant. It looked as though they were like almost getting kicked out and it was never so much... It wasn't necessarily between them. It was more so Gabby abruptly leaving the restaurant crying and Brian was um, just evidently really upset, pissed off. I would say, I would say Gabby was upset. He was angry and he was um, just being very temperamental towards the restaurant staff. Something was wrong. The witnesses were unaware of the events that had transpired on August the 12th in Moab. They may have unfortunately viewed the tipping point of this relationship. It was also that same day that there were more texts between Petito and her mother, during which her family believed she remained at the Tetons. There was absolutely no indication that she was in danger. On August the 30th, her family received their last text from her. The message read simply, No service in Yosemite. Brian would return to the couple's Northport home where his parents also live on September 1st, according to police. In an affidavit attached to a search warrant request, a license plate reader shows the vehicle exited Interstate 75 onto Northport at 1026 a.m. Eastern Time. The white vehicle Polito, Petito and Laundry had been traveling in was later recovered by police at the home. It was processed and there was some material in the van. The Laundry family goes, in, goes to a campground about 75 miles away from their home in early September, according to county officials. Roberta Laundry, Brian Laundry's mother, was also checked in at a waterfront site at the Fort DeSoto campground from September the 6th through September the 8th. This was according to a Pinellas County Park campground check-in report provided to CNN. It had been days since Gabby's family had heard from her, and by September the 11th, they were worried. So, Gabby's family reported her missing to the Suffolk County Police Department in New York at approximately 6.55 p.m. This is when police in Florida knocked on the laundry's door that night, and it was at that time 
that his parents handed them a lawyer's phone number. We don't know what Brian knows. That's the bottom line, a police spokesperson said. We are hopeful to talk to him. He needs to talk to us, and we need to know exactly where he was, where she was, their last locations, and the fact that he was back here for 10 days. And again, the family reported her missing 10 days later. Parents of a missing woman from Long Island need help finding her. She was on a cross-country trip when communication suddenly shut down. CBS 2's Jenna DeAngelis with the pleas from her family tonight. Right now at 11, a South Florida woman vanishes while on a cross-country trip with her boyfriend. The following Wednesday, Laundrie was officially named a person of interest in Petito's disappearance and North Northport Police said he was hindering the investigation. Laundrie had has still not made himself available to be interviewed by investigators or provided any helpful details. His attorney issued the following statement on behalf of his client addressing Laundrie's silence. He said many people are wondering why Mr. Laundrie would not make a statement or speak with law enforcement in the face of Ms. Petito's absence. In my experience, intimate partners are often the first person law enforcement focuses their attention on in cases like this. And the warning that any statement made will be used against you is true, regardless of whether my client had anything to do with Ms. Petito's disappearance. As such, on the advice of counsel, Mr. Laundrie is not speaking on the matter. I have been informed that the Northport, Florida police have named Brian Laundrie as a person of interest in this matter. This formally has not really changed the circumstances of Mr. Laundrie being the focus and attention of law enforcement, and Mr. Laundrie will continue to remain silent on the advice of counsel. The following day, police in Northport held a news conference during which Petito's father begged for her safe return and for Laundrie to speak up and stop hindering the investigation. Later, Petito uh, the, the Petito Schmidt family attorney, Richard Stafford, read aloud a letter to Laundrie's parents pleading for their son to speak to them about Gabby's disappearance. Hours after the family of 22 year old Gabby Petito issued a statement to the family of her fiance begging for information in her disappearance, Brian's sister, Cassie Laundrie, broke her silence in an exclusive interview with Good Morning America. I wish I could talk to him. Laundrie says she's told police everything she knows about her brother, Brian Laundrie, and his fiance Gabby Petito, and their cross-country road trip. I've cooperated every way that I can. I wish I had information or I would give more. I, I, this is all I have is... I, I gave to the police. Petito's father says he isn't sure Cassie Laundrie is being fully transparent, given the fact that her parents and her brother haven't said one word to police. Cassie Laundrie went on to say, obviously, me and my family want Gabby to be found safe. She's like a sister, and my children love her. And all I want is for her to come home safe and found. And this is to be just like a big misunderstanding. The case against Brian was building. The disappearance of Gabby had made world news, and the country was watching, praying and hoping for the best. In the hours and days after she was reported missing, Laundrie would be suspected of a double murder. And despite the speculation, authorities in Utah announced on September the 17th that Petito's case had no connection and it was not related to the double homicide case involving Crystal Turner and Kylan Schult. But by this time, the internet was ablaze with conspiracy theories and Brian was now America's most wanted man. That same day, Laundrie's attorney contacted authorities because the family wanted to discuss his disappearance. They claimed that they had not seen Brian since Tuesday. Police removed items from the Laundrie's house to assist in the search for him, according to his attorney. And authorities said on Twitter that it was the first time the Laundrie family had spoken with them in detail about the case. They also reiterated that Brian is a person of interest in Gabby's disappearance, but they are not currently working a crime investigation. The following day, police searched a vast Florida wildlife reserve for 23-year-old Brian. 
he was still a person of interest in the disappearance of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito. And while across the country the FBI hunted for clues about the missing woman in a mountainous national park in Wyoming. That search would be called off set that Saturday evening by the Northport police due to darkness. At that time, they said they had found nothing. But again, meanwhile, the FBI was conducting ground surveys at Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. And if you recall, that was the last place that her family knew that she had been. And with help from the National Park Service and local law enforcement agencies, they sought clues to Gabby's disappearance. Unfortunately, with it being her last known contact with family members, it had to be in a park with mountainous terrain, and this would be no easy search whatsoever. This is breaking news from Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And that breaking news, a body now recovered in the forest in Wyoming, where authorities have been searching for missing Long Island native Gabby Petito. There is breaking news in the search for Gabby Petito. Just moments ago, officials say remains found near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming are consistent with the description of the missing woman. September the 19th. Petito's body would be discovered in Wyoming. It was the news that no one wanted to come. The FBI said she was found by law enforcement agents who had spent the past two days searching the campgrounds. The next day, police and FBI agents armed with a search warrant swarmed the Florida home Brian Laundrie shared with his parents. The FBI escorted Laundrie's parents out of their home into a waiting van in their driveway around 10 a.m. They were in the car for about 10 minutes before going back inside. Invis investigators inside the home with the family continued whatever they were searching for for most of the day. And it was around 2.30 that same afternoon that they towed Laundrie's silver Mustang away from the home. They also removed numerous boxes of evidence. The search warrant also indicated that they were looking for Laundrie's computer. It is important to note that Laundry and Petito had been living with his parents before making the journey. On September 21st, the autopsy confirmed the body found in Wyoming is that of Gabby Petito. And now, the manhunt for Brian Laundry intensifies in Florida. Teton County Coroner Dr. Brent Blue's initial determination is Petito's death was in fact a homicide. And two days later, a federal arrest warrant would be issued for Brian Laundry in connection with his activities after the death of Gabby Petito. Again, with that breaking news in the Gabby Petito case, authorities just issued an arrest warrant for her fiance, Brian Laundry. The United States District Court of Wyoming issued the warrant and indictment on Wednesday related to Laundry's unauthorized use of a Capital One debit card and PIN code with the intent to defraud between August 30th and September 1st in Wyoming and elsewhere with a value of $1,000 or more. Police continue to search the vast nature preserve near Laundry's family home. Law enforcement agencies across the country have been fielding tips that Laundry might be in their area. Bounty hunters have also now joined the manhunt, including TV reality star and famous bounty hunter Dwayne Dog Chapman. Because I lost a daughter at about the same age, that's I know what the parents feel like, okay? And you want justification. You want the guy behind bars. All of it's alleged that he even committed the murder. But uh, circumstantially, it looks like he did. You know, the strongest lead I see is that one of her friends said he had been in the Appalachian Mountains by himself for a couple months. Now, he's not just a camper then. He is a outdoorsman. So in order to do that, I think because of his age, he felt comfortable. If there's anywhere right now that looks the hottest, that could be the area. The famous bounty hunter joined the hunt on September 25th, promising to catch the fugitive boyfriend of slain Long Island native Gabby Petito before his 24th birthday on November the 18th.
The parents of Brian speak out somewhere around the time of September 27th and said that they don't know where their son is and hope that the FBI can locate him. For the most part, his parents have been relatively quiet. The statement from their attorney came as the FBI said Monday they will dial down the large-scale search efforts for Gabby Petito's fiance as the manhunt enters a second week. Authorities collected personal items from the laundry home in Florida in hopes that they can use DNA samples to help solve the case. On September 30th, FBI returns to the laundry home in Florida. FBI agents were seen looking at the camper and going into the home, according to the reporters on the scene. The attorney for the Laudry family says that the FBI is collecting some personal items belonging to Brian that will assist the canines in their search for him. And according to the attorney at the time, there is nothing more to this. By October 1st, new body camera video was released from a second officer responding to the 911 call of a domestic dispute between Gabby Petito and Brian Laudry while they were on the road back in August. Petito looked at uh, visible bruises on her body uh, as the officer questioned while she sat in the vehicle. This is a very, very important question. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do? What were you What were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was What was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to come. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. It's 100% your call. I support you either way. Just yesterday, Laundry's father assisted the FBI in searching the nearby uh, park reserve where they believe that Brian may be at. He took them on trails that he and Brian had hiked on in places that they had camped at. But Brian Laundry remains unfound. Listening to the body cam footage, Gabby had told officers that she had hit Brian. This is common in domestic violence situations where oftentimes the victim will claim that they initiated the violence or Perhaps they caused the attacker to uh, become violent or, or, or something of that nature. The officer was adamant in his questioning uh, to determine if she was being violent towards him. But understand that that question was simply, I don't think that he believed that she initiated it. And moreover, he was trying to get her to come clean. The unfortunate fact is that there was just not enough evidence. Laundry didn't want to press charges against her, and there was not enough evidence to support her claims that she had struck him. The officer tells the other officer on scene, I support your decision in whatever you do. It's your call. These officers will have to live with that decision for the remainder of their lives. The unfortunate fact is that this is something that police officers on a daily basis encounter in the United States. Domestic violence is a serious problem. And it appears as though Gabby Petito was no stranger to this epidemic. At the end of the day, law enforcement continue to search for Brian Laundry. No one knows where he's at, or if he's alive for that matter. 
I personally believe that he is. And I think that when the time comes, and it will be in the days that are yet to come, that the heat kind of cools down when it's no longer the front page story. Perhaps he will be found. Where is he? No one knows. It is a shame that more information has not been forthcoming by his family. And I understand that a family would want to protect their loved one, a son, a brother. But in a situation like this, Brian Laundrie has dug himself in a hole, and you can only dig so far before it collapses. It's time that they air out their dirty laundry, so to speak. It is time for Brian Laundry to appear. And if he did nothing, he will face the justice system and he'll be acquitted. But at the end of the day, one has to look at all the circumstances revolving around this case. From the point that the police knocks on his parents' door and they hand an attorney's phone number. To the fact that he arrived in Florida in her van while she remained missing. So many things don't add up. I want to take a moment and talk about Gabby Petito. I think it is important that we don't lose sight in regards to who she was. At the young age of 22, I don't think that she realized what an effect that she would have on the world. Not only during her time on this earth, but now as she's passed on, her legacy will remain with us. And hopefully, hopefully, some young ladies who aspire to be Instagram famous will learn something from her story about how it is important who you choose to be a partner with. How it is important for you to be able to stand up against the vile and evil in this world. To know that even in the scariest and darkest of times, there is hope that perhaps Gabby Petito's voice can be heard through them. From all of us here at the Deuce Conrad Show, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with her family and to Brian Laundry. Man up, turn yourself in, and answer the questions that the world has for you. Until next time, we'll see you then.